Hi, Emma. Um, I'm not sure if this is the order that, uh, the correct order of pictures you sent me, but I'm going to go through and answer all your questions for you. Um, so for this number one here, um, your first question was, why do I make a triangle? So our real forces, which I'm going to kind of highlight here, you drew, were caused by real objects, right? Normal force caused by the skis, tension by the rope, and gravity by the earth. But looking at the normal force, the normal force is going up and to the left, and we need to look at the motion horizontally and vertically because of certain rules like we did with projectile motion might apply in the future. So we need to break that normal force up into the horizontal and vertical components. So then we can say, for the case of the skier, the skier will assume is nice level on top of the water. <clears throat> the upward FNY is equal to gravity going down. So the skier is not going to sink down into the water or jump up in the air um, or float up in the air. Now for this problem, it's kind of vague. What's happening horizontally? We don't know if the skier is slowing down, accelerating, or moving at a constant speed. If the skier was going at a constant speed, then we would say tension and the X component of normal force would be equal. But we don't have enough information to say for this problem. Um, how do I know which force needs a truck? We mentioned that. Um, so for any force that's not in our X or Y, horizontal or vertical direction, we're going to break that up into its horizontal and vertical components. Um, how do I know which lines are congruent? Um, so the problem would have to tell us whether the velocity is constant, the object is accelerating, starting at rest, and then starting to move. So for one, it's kind of vague, and it's, it's that way on purpose so we can have these conversations. Um, but we can assume that the upward and downward forces are definitely equal. Um, for six here, uh, how do I know which lines are equal? So in this case, we're moving at a constant acceleration, meaning there's going to be an overall force, unbalanced force or net force, going to the right. So there's going to be more overall force going to the right. Um, and the blocks are not moving vertically, so the upward forces will equal the downward forces. So... Looking at block B, you have, let's see, friction and, you have friction and normal here being equal, which we don't know if they are equal or not. What we do know, let's see, wait, um, for block B, friction, okay, for block, okay, I see what it is this normal force here that you have. We could call that a normal force provided by the surface of the person's finger, but usually any force that's, <clears throat> we're not sure if it's a, like a flat plane or if it's rounded or specifically by, applied by a person, we call it an applied force. So this would be really AP for applied, where some people like putting FP for like push or person. I tend to go with FAP. Um, for the other one, block A. So really when you would draw, let's go back to B. Um, we would have to make sure that the sum of our line, I'll draw underneath. So this is for block B again. So this is the applied force by the person. When you draw it out, try and make the sum of the two leftward forces that was a horrible horizontal line, being smaller. And I'm going to put F and A, meaning the force from block A. So the sum of these lefts is definitely less than just that one force there. For block A, let's see here. The ups equal the downs, okay. And we would want to show that the normal force caused from block B is greater than 
friction on between the, the surfaces. So try and make sure that you draw that line noticeably greater by some amount than the, the frictional force. Um, so your net force being to the right. So any time, so for us to accelerate to the right here, the overall force needs to be greater going to the right, and that's what is meant by net force. Um, I'm thinking you're asking no air resistance here. So it doesn't say. Uh, I think the answer key and how you have it drawn here would represent no air resistance. If we did include air resistance for this ball, air resistance and friction opposes motion. But it gets really confusing with projectile since you have that parabolic path. So the direction of air resistance is always changing because the path is always changing. So at this moment that we have pictured in number eight, it's moving in that direction. So this is like the motion or velocity. And air resistance would act the opposite direction. So you could draw this as force of air resistance. I usually just do AR or write air. But a split second later, when the ball is now this position, say, you would have a force diagram with it being a little bit less of an angle with the horizontal. I didn't mean to draw that bigger, but this would be the force of air resistance. So you can see how those angles are changing. But it's not specified in the problem. So we can have that conversation. Um... For the skier, how do I know which is an X and Y axis? So it really doesn't matter. Sometimes um, different teachers, professors, textbook will call this horizontal, this axis here, the parallel axis, and then this one here, the perpendicular. So they call them like just abbreviation with the forces and things, par and perp. Sometimes you'll see notations as um, parallel. They'll say two parallel lines as the symbol. And then for perpendicular, they'll do. And I'm just tilting my paper to the left or my head to the right, so that might be why. <laughs> it's a little weird drawing. Um, so this symbol here for perpendicular. But we're already drawing a bunch of lines, um, and we've already talked about drawing force diagrams in terms of x, I'm sorry, x and y. So anytime we have a surface oops, that's tilted, we can, tilt for this case, tilt our head to the right or turn our paper to the left so that it looks like this direction is straight up into the sky. And we would call that the y direction, which you have labeled and then x direction. Some students in class over the past couple days have been flipping them, which is fine. You could call like up, you're going up the mountain, right, if you go in this direction, and call that the y direction. It really doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. You could really call them smiley face and frowny face if you really wanted to. It's just making sure that if you're calling this your x direction, that any forces that go in that direction are also called x. Uh, this one's kind of confusing for some. So let's look at this part here. Net force equals zero. How is the net force zero? So we're moving at a constant velocity. So when you're moving at a constant velocity, you are not accelerating because all the forces are balanced out in all directions. And you can look at it in terms of Newton's first law. Objects in motion stay in motion at a constant velocity or objects at rest stay at rest. So for objects at rest or in a constant, moving in a constant velocity, the forces are going to look the same. The force diagrams are going to look the same because all the forces are going to be balanced.
All right, so you're saying don't they have to be balanced and the left and right aren't. Okay. So looks like you got the normal and gravity here for block A being equal. There, there's no motion vertically. Keep on clicking wrong things here. Um, I think you have these flip-flopped as far as A and B. Yeah, I think you have them flip-flopped. So this should have actually be block B because we have the tension force by the rope. So we got normal up, gravity down, that's okay. There is friction. And this normal force, the little, little force that you have drawn here, um, this was big discussion in class. So this is the normal force caused by block A, right? They're connected together here. So the reason why it's called a normal force is how the picture is drawn. There's two surfaces right here where A is pulling to the right on B, and it's, it's a surface which is perpendicular to that surface, so we call it a normal force. If you viewed it like a real hook, like a fish hook or some kind of other hook, where you don't really know if it's a flat surface or how that force is being applied, you could technically, instead of calling that normal force, you can call it applied force because you have a lack of another type of explanation for it. For block, this is really A here. Same thing, this normal force, you could cause that, call that applied force from block B. Um, but since we have motion to the left in this problem, in block, again, this is A, <laughs> these forces should be equal because they're moving in a constant velocity. But we're not going to put horizontal congruency marks on the block B because we have two forces here that would equal the one force to the left. So I think I answered all that. The only other thing I would say is since we have in the same diagram two FNs, put some kind of description with them. Like um, this one I might call FNG from the ground. Or, oops, crashed here. Uh, where was I? This one you might want to call FNT for table. I think it's a table. Not really sure. Or ground or something to describe it. This one, maybe FNB because it's caused by the object B or block B. It would be up to you. Something just so you could talk about them and not just say FN, meaning they're different things, or showing that they're different things. Um, let's see here. Confused about where the normal force comes in. OK, so thinking about the force diagram for the fridge, the magnet is pulling the fridge to the right, right? So if you have slowly approached, like if this magnet was like, say here, it's gonna wanna try and pull the refrigerator to the right, right? There's gonna be an attraction force. But let's see if this is written correctly here. Yeah, we could talk like that. You have it right. There is... Oh no, I think this is... Yeah, we're good here. Um, the refrigerator, refrigerator cannot move to the right. Ah, 
announcements. Um, I'm actually going to skip this one for now because this was a, a question that was confusing for a lot of students, and I think it'll be easier if I can give you another demonstration um, with magnets to kind of let you feel the forces. So we could talk about number eight when you get back. Um, let's see what else we got here. Why do I need to make a triangle? Am I skipping things here? So I think I got everything. I don't know if I messed something up when it glitched out. But if there's any other questions, feel free to send me another message. And I hope you re are returning soon and feeling better. Have a great day.